Hey everyone, I'm Flavia and today my group and I are going to talk about Lean Manufacturing and Six Sigma. So I would like to start with the definitions first of all. And Lean Manufacturing is a methodology that focuses on minimizing waste within manufacturing systems while at the same time maximizing the productivity. And Waste is seen as anything that does not add value to the product you're selling and the customers are not willing to pay for it. Some of the benefits of the lean manufacturing are reduced lead time, reduced operation costs and the improvement of the product quality. So overall, lean manufacturing means producing what is needed, when it is needed and with the minimum possible also producing materials and equipment, and producing labor and space. Now that we got the basics out of the way, let's move on into the lean manufacturing history for better understanding. The lean manufacturing originated with the Toyota production system, which is often referred to as just-in-time production or JIT. Toyota became successful after the World War II when they adopted a number of different American production and quality techniques. So they took the manufacturing techniques of Henry Ford and the statistical quality control ideas of Edward Deming to build the foundation of the Toyota manufacturing system. Toyota developed a procedure that reduces the time needed for setup and for the changeovers as well. Unlike Ford, Toyota developed manufacturing in smaller batches. This required a set of processes that would reduce the changeover time as well as the setup time. The resulting procedure is called single minute exchange of dye or shortly SMAD. There are seven steps used in SMAD. One of them includes streamlining the external and the internal activities. The techniques Toyota used were adopted by other Japanese manufacturing companies, but none of them were as successful as Toyota is. In the 1980s, American companies started adopting this process that was created by Toyota. But to put a twist on it, they called it by different names, like for example, could Continuous Flow Manufacturing, CFM, or Word Class Manufacturing, WCM, and Stockless Production. Toyota knows how to make cars. It does it so well, it became the first company to produce more than 10 million a year. Its success is rooted in a special system and began what's now known as lean manufacturing, an ethos emulated by companies around the world to make products faster cheaper and better. Here's how Toyota changed the way we make things. Following the Second World War, Japan was left in a precarious economic position. Steel and other metals are scarce. Already disadvantaged by lacking natural resources, materials were hard to come by and companies had to be creative to compete. Toyota's founder, Sikichi Toyoda, had started a loom business but it was his son Kichiro who founded the motor company in 1937. They were used to working within narrow margins. As the shortage of materials increased during the war, the number of headlamps on its Model K truck was reduced to one, and it only had brakes on one of the axles. The turning point for Toyota's production system would come in the early 50s, when Kichiro's cousin Eiji would travel to the US with a veteran loom machinist, Taichi Ono. They visited Ford's River Rouge plant in Michigan and were impressed by the scale of the operation, but knew that in cash-strapped Japan, companies didn't have the resources for such a system. Having months' worth of stock sitting in a warehouse would tie up precious capital they didn't have. Instead, what truly impressed Ono was a visit to a supermarket, a Piggly Wiggly, according to legend. Japan didn't really have self-service stores at this point, and he was struck by the way customers could choose exactly what they wanted, when they wanted. He decided to model his production line on a similar idea. With the supermarket formula, only enough parts were produced in the first phase to replace what was used in the second, and so on. This is where the just-in-time system really took shape. 
Toyota was able to eliminate much of the waste in Ford's system, making smaller numbers of parts to be used when it needed them, allowing the company to operate on a tighter budget. As part of this, Ono developed Kanban, a sign-based scheduling method which shows goods in, goods in production and goods out. It's now seen as a precursor to barcodes. Ono and Toyota also noticed that American car companies were still employing many of Henry Ford's early production techniques. They kept operations at full tilt in order to maximise efficiencies of scale, but then had to repair defective cars after they rolled off the line. Ono believed this caused more problems and didn't encourage workers or machines to stop making the mistake. So he placed a cord above every station which any worker could pull to stop the entire assembly if they spotted a problem. The whole team would work on it to prevent it from happening again. As teams identified more problems, the number of errors began to drop dramatically. Combined with a culture of continuous incremental improvement called Kaizen, the Toyota production system built a brand known for making reliable and affordable cars. But Toyota was also getting good at producing cars quickly. In 1962, the company had produced 1 million vehicles. By 1972, they would produced 10 million. It was around that time that the efficiencies of their factories enabled Toyota to produce a car every 1.6 man-hours, much lower than their competitors in the US, Sweden and Germany. And as the oil crisis of the decade sent gas prices higher, cheap-to-run Japanese cars became much more appealing to Americans, whose powerful but gas-guzzling vehicles suddenly became very expensive to run. Today, Toyota has made over 250 million vehicles. Others have looked to them to learn the lessons of lean. Combining craft with mass production, avoiding waste while striving for constant improvement. Boeing is perhaps the most famous, restructuring a plant to better suit TPS. Intel is another long-time lean ambassador and is exploring the principles in the context of AI and the Internet of Things. A Canadian hospital even used Toyota's system to decrease wait times in its ER. The Toyota production system changed not just how cars are made globally, but how we approach making things full stop. It also showed that there's always a better way to make a product. To close off this introduction, let's now talk about lean manufacturing today. As we speak, Toyota is still the lean example for the world. And it is the leading company in this sector to this day. Toyota will most likely become the largest automaker in the world in terms of overall sales. We can notice their dominating success on points such as their rising sales and their market shares in every global market. Not to mention their big lead in the hybrid era. The hybrid technology and Toyota's lead on it only proves the power of the lean enterprise. This continued success over the past two decades created now an enormous demand for knowledge of lean thinking. There are so many books and papers written about it, not to mention the media articles on the subject as well. There are numerous resources available online nowadays for this growing audience. As lean thinking continues to spread over the world, the leaders and are now adapting these tools to go beyond manufacturing, for example, to logistic and distribution services, retail, healthcare, construction, maintenance, and even government. In fact, lean methods are only beginning to take root among senior managers and leaders in all sectors today. Hi guys, my name is Ana Clara and now I'm going to talk about uh, waste elimination. Uh, the main reason companies look to implement lean manufacturing strategies is to help them eliminate waste. Uh, cutting out waste uh, will reduce their uh, expenses and maximize profits so that, can, uh, that they can be more competitive, competitive and therefore more successful. One of the first uh, ways that lean manufacturer can help to eliminate waste into uh, different categories uh, is type of waste. Um, it's traditional broken down uh, into either defects, 
excess processing, overproduction, waiting, inventory, movement, and motion. Uh, when looking at the workplace, uh, keeping these various type Types of waste in mind can help you to spot improvement opportunities so that problems can be solved and waste eliminated. And the review, uh, the seven wastes of lean are inventory, uh, waiting defects, overproduction, motion, uh, transportation, overprocessing. Uh, now, I'll show you examples of lean tools used to, com to combat a waste. Uh, the first uh, is st standardized work. Uh, standardized uh, work documents, they work content uh, to meet customer requirements in terms of content, sequence, times, and outcome. It defines the who, what, when, where, um, why and how the work is to be performed. Um, it's created by the people uh, who the work and facilitate by their leader. Uh, it is the one, the best way now today to do the task. Uh, this one best way uh, may change as part of the continuous improvement of efforts and to correct abnormalities and not privileging card encounter it. Uh, there is work is, a, is part of the stability elements in the lean house. Uh, standardized work helps to create a foundation for continuous improvement. Process uh, should be stabilized and then standardized. Uh, it's a visual management uh, in a well-designed visual process Anyone should be able to talk, to walk uh, in the, the see who, what, when, where, why, and the how within a minute. Um, visual workplace helps you create a foundation for a continuous improvement. It provides information about an area and highlights abnormal conditions. And there are many levels of visual workplace. Uh, the higher the risk in the process, uh, the higher the level of visuals that may be required for control. Uh, visual workplace uh, is a method of simplifying, uh, clarifying, highlighting and separating the normal from the abnormal. Uh, with the proper visual techniques, the workplace uh, can become a safe, uh, is to manage uh, high qu quality and a highly product environment. In another example is Kanban or pool system. What is Kanban? Uh, Kanban is a method of regulating the flow of a goods buff, uh, both within the factory and with outside suppliers and customers. Based on automatic replenishment through signal cards that indicate and um, when more goods are needed. How does Kanban help? Um, Kanban eliminates uh, waste from inventor and overproduction, can eliminate uh, the need for physical inventories. Uh, instead of relying on, on signal cards to indicate when more goods need to be ordered. Um, the next is Kaizen, or continuous improvement. What is Kaizen? Um, Kaizen is a strategy where employees work together proactively to achieve a regular incremental um, Incremental improvements in the manufacturing process. Uh, Kanban is a strategy where employees work together proactively to achieve regular incremental improvements in the manufacturing process. How does Kaizen help? Uh, Kaizen combines the collective talents uh, of a company to create an engine for continually eliminated waste from manufacturing process. The next is PDCA, uh, Plan, Do, Check and Next. Uh, what is PDCA? An interactive methodology for implementing improvements. Uh, plan 
uh, establish plan expected results, uh, do implement plan, check, verify expected result achieved, act, review and assess uh, or do it again. How does PDC help? Uh, applies a scientific approach to make improvement, improvements, uh, plan, uh, develop a hypothesis, do run experiment, um, check evaluated results, act, refine your experiment or trying again. Next is continuous flow. What is continuous flow? Uh, continuous flow uh, is manufacturing where working processes smoothly flows uh, through production with minimal or no uh, buffers between the step of the manufacturing process. But continuous flow help uh, eliminates many forms of waste, for example, inventory, waiting time, and transport, etc. 5S, what is 5S? Uh, 5S uh, is basically to organize the work area, uh, is sort, uh, eliminate that which is not needed, send in order, uh, organize remain items, uh, shine, clean and inspect work area, uh, standardize uh, write standards for both. Sustain, uh, regular applying the standards. Uh, how does 5S help? Uh, eliminates uh, waste that results from a poorly organized work area, for example, wasting time looking for a tool, for example. Hi, it's Mario here. Today, I will talk about principles of Six Sigma. Six Sigma have five principles. Identify value, map the value streams, create for all, establish pool, seek perfection. First, the value. The first principle focuses on identify value in the eyes of the customers. What do your customers value? If you are can deliver what they value, you have a happy, satisfied customers. And they will return to buy from you again and again and again, allowing you maintain and grow your business. Value adding activity is nothing that changes the size, shape, fit, form, or function of the material or information to meet customers' requirements. Think of it as an option the customers would be willing to pay for. All other activities are waste. Second, value stream. The value stream is made of the process necessary to deliver products to customers. This is called value stream mapping. VZM. Some of the process will add the value to the customers, but many won't. Studies have shown that only around 5% of business activities and value. That leaves 19.5% of waste. If you could remove that waste, your process would be a lot of more efficient, free, or create more products in the same amount of time. And the core focus of the second principle, identify the value stream so that as much as possible, you can limit the process to own those that value, allowing your free, free up more apt to better manage customers' demands. Next. Flow. After the value stream map has been created, the next step is to examine the process, minimize waste, and find solutions to create flow. This means parts moving in a smooth sequence from your supply chain, flow manufacturing 
to the finished product. The ultimate aim is to create one piece flow where inventory, stupids, and defects are eliminated. So, you maximize productivity and deliver products to customers on time, every time, and with no defects. Next. Value pool. Once you are established a smooth flow of process, you want to be in a position where customers can come to a go the products they need when they need it. So you don't have to stock build materials and create predictions in view creating the expensive inventory and needs to be managed and may may yet and go to waste. Create pool means designing your process so that all activities are synchronized from the time the customers place the order. Your supply chain. Supply chain and manufacturing process to deliver. Your aim is to create products to pull of the customers as with just in time manufacturing. The result satisfied. Next, perfection, the most important principle of all lean think, continuous improvement and focus on customers' needs should become part of business culture. Your art force are key to the success of any continuous improving initiative. They should be your number one resource in your pursuit of perfection. Determine strategic priority and deploy your the best people to drive continued improvement in the same area. Provide training and resource to enable structure. Team driving continuous improvement activities on a daily basis. Encourage your employees to share the, the ideas. After all, they experience the process first hand and now how things work. Finally, let the scene the track results, the day inputs. In doing so, you will embed a legacy of continually improved and customer-centric culture across your entire workforce. In an increasingly global and technical marketplace, it's more important than ever business to drive. And lean manufacturing has been proven to help not just manufacture principles, but organization across the range of industries. By employing these five lean manufacturing principles, you can understand what value it's to your customers and adapt your process and the way it's working so you can deliver more of it. So, now, one video. Let's say your business is doing well and you're thinking of expanding. That's great, but it's also the riskiest time for your business. In fact, many businesses don't survive the transition. Should you throw money at the problem by investing in new equipment or hiring more people? Should you make your staff work more overtime? Your answers to questions like these can make or break your business. And that's where Lean comes in. Lean is a philosophy about delivering value from your customer's perspective, eliminating waste, and continuously improving your processes. Lean can radically change the way you do business. Lean management is based on four principles. The first principle is pull. Rather than producing as much as possible, customer demand pulls goods or services through the manufacturing process. This minimizes overproduction, inventory, and ultimately working capital. The second is one-piece flow. Focusing on one single piece at a time minimizes work in progress, process interruptions, lead and waiting time, while increasing quality and flexibility. The third is tact. 
It's the heartbeat of a lean system. It's how fast you need to manufacture a product to meet customer demand. TACT allows us to balance work content, achieve a continuous flow, and respond flexibly to changes in the marketplace. And the fourth is zero defects. Mistakes happen, but a lean company doesn't pass on defects. Mistakes from previous steps must be fixed before going on. Combined with a robust, continuous improvement process, the four principles of lean management will help your company stay ahead of the competition in a constantly changing marketplace. So, if you're ready to begin your lean journey, contact us today. Let us show you how lean can bring out the best in your business. Hi, my name is Julia, and I'm going to talk about the history of the Six Sigma. The roots of the Six Sigma as a instrument standard uh, can be traced uh, back to Carl Friedrich uh, Gauss, who introduced the concept of the normal curve. Uh, the Six Sigma was a measurement uh, standard in product variations uh, who, that can be traced back into the 20s when Walter Schihard showed that three sigma from the mean is the point where a process requires correction. Uh, later, uh, many measurement standards uh, came on, on the scene, uh, but the credit for coining the term Six Sigma goes to a Motorola engineer named Bill Smith. Um, incidentally, the Six Sigma is a federal register a uh, trademark of Motorola. In the early and mind 80s, with chairman Bob Calvin uh, at the helm, Motorola engineer decided that the traditional quality levels uh, didn't provide enough granularity. Um, the measuring defects in thousands of opportunities uh, didn't provide enough regularity. So instead, they wanted to measure the defect per million opportunities. So Motorola developed uh, this new standard and created a methodology uh, who needs, uh, that makes the uh, total uh, cultural change associated with it. So the Six Sigma helped Motorola realize how powerful bottle lines results in their organizations. In fact, they documented more than 60 billion in saving as a result of the Six Sigma's effort. Since then, tens of thousands of companies around the world adopted the Six Sigma uh, as a way of doing business. And this is a direct result uh, of many of America's leaders uh, openly praising the benefits of the Six Sigma. Uh, leaders such as uh, Larry Bozer uh, of Allet Signal, uh, that is now the Hanuel Company, and Jack Wilch of General, General Electric Company um, adopted the Six Sigma. And the rumor has it that Larry and Jack were planning golf, uh, playing golf one day, and Jack bet uh, Jack bet Larry that he could implement the Six Sigma faster and with greater result at GA um, than Larry did at Allen Signal. Uh, the results speak for themselves. Uh, Six Sigma has evolved over time. Uh, it's more than just a quality system uh, like TKM or ISO. Uh, it's uh, also a way of doing the business. So Six Sigma can be seen as a vision, a philosophy, a symbol, a metric, a goal and a methodology. So uh, what is the Six Sigma? Uh, throughout the, the industry, uh, you will hear Six Sigma in many different ways. 
So same companies use it as a vision or a strategy, but others use like uh, just a methodology. So look at this uh, problem solve methodology. And some companies use it as a measurement uh, to their qualities. So we look into all of these ways of applying the six sigmas, uh, but essentially it um, is how we need to work. So we apply the six sigma um, by solving uh, problems of the, the company uh, by using the methodology. All of this results in a quality imp improvement. Thinking about that, we can see that the Six Sigma provides our organizations the ability to de develop uh, millions of dollars in productivity savings because it's improved process um, and of the activities that uh, that make part of this. So the tools and principles provide a competitive advantage. And when we talk about the Six Sigma, we consider both traditional variation uh, reductions program uh, that follow the DM. DMA IT as well as, uh, as, race, uh, as waste reduction, which is focused on the elements of lean. So it's necessary to learn variations reductions to create superior products and service and waste reduction waste reductions. So the to increase efficient and reduce site time. A statistical tool set for variation reductions, scrap and re rework and elimination, and the process control. Um, this is all the variation of the Six Sigma uh, we can use uh, in our companies in many ways uh, to have the benefits of this methodology who is also, that is also uh, another way of seeing all the process. Hi guys, my name is Victor and now I'm gonna talk about why get a Lean Six Sigma certification. Uh, the first point is become an improvement expert deliver positive results and increase value for the customer. Second point is enhance your perspective. They focus on simplifying and unnecessary steps and that consuming effort in research. Third point, worldwide recognition for all types of business process and operation. Fourth point, increase your job opportunity. You will also improve local problem solving and leadership acumen. 5. Improve your leadership skills. Improve your capabilities as a leader. 6. Develop a high performance team. Provide meaningful, meaningful analysis and process skills re relevant to leadership position. So, what are the differences between a yellow white? yellow, white, green, and black belt. Let's see the tip. First level, white belt, team members who have been prepared with a basic knowledge of Lean Six Sigma so that they can support but not actively participate in projects. Second level, yellow belt, project team members with a understanding of concepts basic tools. Their role is to assist Green Belt. Green Belt trained to lead small lean, six, small lean Six Sigma projects usually within one department. They can also assist Black Belt on larger projects. Black Belt typically operate in Lean Six Sigma projects as a full-time role within organization. 
They leave green and yellow belts who can overcome complex problems. Champion belts. The champion belts are senior members of the organization who offer support to ensure the success of the project. The, their role requires an understanding of the key concepts and methods. Master black belt. The top, the highest level of Lean Six Sigma knowledge and experience. Often a full-time role mentoring black belts and coaching Lean Six Sigma belts. The certified Lean Six Sigma white belt is an individual that has been provided and has demonstrated an understanding of the most basic level of the Six Sigma methodology. The white belt certification designation also reflects knowledge by the individual of the basic definition, history, and structure of the discipline. This understanding provides a solid awareness of who is involved in the actual Six Sigma implementation and uh, their role within an organization. The certified Lean Six Sigma Yellow Belt is a professional who is, who is well versed in the foundation, foundation element of the Lean Six Sigma methodology, who leads limited improvement projects and or, and or serves as a team member as a part of more complex improvement projects led by certified green belt or certified black belt, typically in a part-time role. A Lean Six Sigma Yellow Belt possesses a true understanding of the elementary aspects of the Lean Six Sigma method includes competence in the subject matters contained within the phase of depth, define, measure and control DMC. A Lean Six Sigma Yellow Belt understands how to implement, perform, interpret, and apply Lean Six Sigma in a skilled yet limited and or supportive context. The Certified Lean Six Sigma Green Belt is a professional who is well versed in the core to advance elements of the Lean Six Sigma methodology, who leads improvement projects and or serves as a team member as a part of more complex improvement projects led by a certified black belt, typically in a part-time role. A Lean Six Sigma Green Belt possesses a true understanding of all aspects of the Lean Six Sigma method includes competence in subject matters contained with in the phase of define, measure, analyze, improve, and control (DMIEC), a Lean Six Sigma Green Belt understands how to implement, perform, interpret, and apply Lean Six Sigma at a high level of prof 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 science. The certified Lean Six Sigma Black Belt is a professional who is well versed in the Lean Six Sigma methodology who leads complex improvement projects, typically in a full-time cap capacity. A Lean Six Sigma Black Belt possesses a true understanding of all aspects of the Lean Six Sigma method include a high level of competence in the subject matter contained with the phase of defining, measure, analyzing, improve, and control. DMIEC. A Lean Six Sigma Black Belt understands how to implement, perform, interpret, and apply Lean Six Sigma at an advanced level of profile. So this is a quick overview of Lean Six Sigma certifications. Now in the world of Lean Six Sigma, certifications are critical. You might be asking yourself, which certification is right for me? And I would really say it depends. You need to ask yourself a couple questions. First, how much time do you have? If you don't have a lot of time to invest in this initially, Maybe you don't want to go with a black belt certification. Maybe you want to go with a white belt or a yellow belt. Another question you want to ask is what does your job or the job you're interested in require? If it doesn't need a black belt, maybe you just decide to go with a yellow belt or a green belt. Now, just in my opinion, I think each of these certifications can boost your resume. So I wouldn't worry too much if you don't select the right one or what you think is the right one. 
because all of them, I think, can help you. Another point that I want to make here is that there's a lot of organizations that offer certifications, but before you select one, you want to ask yourself or ask a few questions. First, are you looking for online or on-site training? That may dictate what organization you go with. Another question, do, does an organization certifications require previous work experience? That might also change who you select as your certification provider. Uh, and another question, do they have good examples of test questions? I think it's important that you see those on their website so you're not surprised when you take the certification course or the test at the end of the course. Um, you should really know ahead of time what those are going to look like. There's no, no surprises. Um, and finally, I'd say that as long as you don't really get a certification from some random organization or somebody off the street, I think that you'll be okay. You do want to go with organizations that do have some reputation and that are reliable.